most people in the health sphere are familiar with selenium because of Brazil nuts. Some bodybuilders know it because selenium is very popular in liver maintenance protocols. It's considered a trace element by conventional nutritional guidelines, meaning we need it in very small amounts. Problem is, it's very easy to become deficient in selenium, also very easy to become toxic. The idea of it being a trace element that it is so easy to get leads people to not seeking foods or supplements containing selenium. Hypothetically, if you're following a diet based around high quality organic foods grown in soil with adequate mineral content, you wouldn't have to supplement anything, but that's not reality. And depending on the specific foods you eat, the location you're in will dictate you know, your diet and that soil quality, therefore what you need to supplement in your diet. Typically, everyone needs to take everything to some degree at varying frequencies, whether it's every day or once a week. Paleo, carnivore, raw primal dieters tend to develop more severe deficiencies in certain minerals, while the general population is deficient in just about everything. If I had to guess which fad diet was the best, still not healthy, I would say Mediterranean or paleo in the sense that you know, you're not gonna cause years and years and years of damage to your health that you're gonna have to recover from if you follow the diet for a prolonged period of time. You know, I was a carnivore for about eight years and now it's gonna take me three, four, five years to just recover from all of those imbalances. So if we take a look at the selenium content of some popular foods, it seems feasible to get it through your diet, especially when you eat beef every day. You know, 33 micrograms of selenium and we don't really need more than 50. But even in a highly bioavailable food source like animal foods, like beef, you might not be absorbing that selenium. That has to do with your specific organ function, enzyme capacity, the anti-nutrient content of the food, and your gut microbiome health. In my case, since you know my liver and pancreas and gut microbiome was destroyed, I was heavily selenium deficient despite eating beef every single day in very large amounts, far exceeding the needed amount. There are far too many factors at play. So even if you were eating Brazil nuts, which have multiple times more selenium than any food we have access to, technically a toxic level if consumed on a daily basis, you might not actually be digesting it. Most people are in such an unhealthy state from the modern diet, the modern environment, that we aren't able to absorb nutrients from our food. On the other hand, we do have access to pure vitamin and mineral supplements, so it's pretty quick and easy to gauge a reaction when taking even a small dose from a hypothetical deficient nutrient. Uh, I have organsupplements.com, which I created because of my beliefs in what we should be supplementing and in the context of our modern diet, but I'll talk more about that later. Brazil nuts, anti-nutrient content, not that safe of a bet. Tuna, halibut, sardines, anything from the ocean, kind of polluted, has toxins in it. Pork, very hard to get high quality, and the nutrient content is similar to beef. So ideally, you eat plenty of beef, and you have an ideal amount of absorption. And this is for three ounces of each of the respective foods. Someone actually asked in the Q&A last week, you know, is selenium toxic? Is selenium a poison? And at the doses I've seen people taking, yes. Even the average supplement available commercially is dosed around 100 micrograms or 200 micrograms per pill. Now, most health organizations only recommend 100 micrograms. I think around 50 is a much safer amount, especially if it's a pure supplement. And I wouldn't even take those higher doses on a weekly or bi-monthly basis because when you take that high of a dose at once, you know, even if you're only taking it so frequently, it's still you know, kind of toxic at that one point and it can put a lot of stress on your body, which is why as much as I would like to recommend food sources, if you're not absorbing it, it's simply better to take a smaller dose of a supplement, which is why everything on organ supplements is in a liquid form. So you could take a quarter of a dropper, a half of a dropper, and really mediate that dose. So the selenoproteins, which are what the liver turns selenium into, have very important antioxidant functions, maintaining normal physiological processes in cells. They help in muscle regeneration. But if you overdose on selenium, it can lead to oxidation, cell death. 
One study I was reading said that one milligram per liter of selenium in the blood plasma can maintain those antioxidant functions, but when above two milligrams per liter, it stimulates cellular oxidation. And you know, once the body is healthy, once you have an adequate selenium storage, you know, the body's pretty good at recycling stuff, so you don't have to really take it that frequently, no more than a few times per month maximum. But if you're on a carnivore diet, if you're coming from a carnivore diet, it's very likely that you're gonna be deficient in selenium as well as other minerals that I've talked about in the past. So let's touch on liver function. Although selenium is required for optimal liver function, a liver that is already near damage or damaged is so sensitive to it that it might make things worse, even any amount. So you wanna try to get your liver into a reasonable state before taking selenium. And there are actually studies correlating higher plasma selenium to worse blood markers. However, there are also studies showing the opposite, that selenium levels were significantly lower in liver disease patients compared to the control group. Dietary assessments did not show a reduced dietary intake of selenium between the two groups, which indicates that the liver usage of selenium in distress can easily exceed that average dietary intake. Now, if selenium is an antioxidant, then obviously plasma levels are going to be higher when the body is in distress. They're trying to prevent the oxidation. So those poor blood markers aren't necessarily caused by the selenium. And I'm surprised the researchers didn't indicate that. You know, it's the same as cholesterol, where cholesterol is being blamed for heart disease as a firefighter would be blamed for being at a fire when he's trying to put it out. Thyroid health comes up a lot when selenium is spoken about, and I think I did mention selenium in my past thyroid videos. The thyroid gland does store a higher amount of selenium than any other organ in the body. It uses it in the production of thyroid hormones to regulate metabolism, controlling growth and development in children and young adults. Maintaining an adequate iodine and selenium intake while reducing toxic halogens such as fluoride and chlorine are first priority. And if you see a boost in your sex drive when you take selenium, you know, the, the thyroid gland does produce those sex hormones, so that could be a reason. There are a lot of studies on selenium and cancer prevention. It does reduce DNA damage and oxidative stress, so therefore it reduces the risk of certain cancers. You know, if you have an adequate amount of selenium, which contributes to proper liver function, your detox system, the toxins that are causing the cancer will not be stuck in the body. So this isn't a direct thing, you know, it's because your body is healthy and a healthy body requires an adequate amount of selenium. Same thing with heart disease. Many studies showing higher selenium levels being associated with lower risk of heart disease. And that can be said about quite a few nutrients when it comes to heart disease, vitamins, minerals, especially D3, K2, magnesium. You know, the doctors, modern health authorities have kept the simple secret of nutrition away from the masses. You know, they wouldn't be making any money. Uh, finishing off with the immune system. And since there are much lower levels of oxidation in the body, if you have a proper functioning liver because your selenium intake is adequate, when there is a foreign invader in the body, toxins or bacteria, you know, the body isn't dealing with so many other negatives, so many nutritional deficiencies, it's able to fight off those potential threats. So as I've mentioned several times, uh, I, I think it helps to take selenium because our food absorption is definitely compromised. Even if the paper value of what we're eating says we have enough selenium, you're not accounting for the other nutrients in it, the anti-nutrients. Is my body using up more selenium? Is it not getting absorbed because of the specific food? Which is why I do have a selenium supplement on organsupplements.com. I think I've said in past videos that it is important to take iodine with selenium, so they are both utilized, but nothing crazy, guys. You know, sometimes I see people taking 5, 10, 15 supplements at once with a meal. It's just insane. You shouldn't be taking more than a few at a time, ideally only one at a time, so you can gauge your reaction, and then as you see your reaction to individual supplements, then you can say, hey, I know I feel better when I take this amount of this and that amount of that, so then, yeah, you could take them all at once with the meal and see how you feel. Organsupplements.com, some really interesting stuff, guys. A lot of stuff that can just be taken every day very safely too. Magnesium oil for the spray on the body. 
We got some masticum and hopefully a zinc supplement very soon. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully this helps you guys out. I'm going to try to do uh, maybe molybdenum next week and any other minerals that I haven't covered so far in detail. Uh, I don't have a great memory, so if you guys can kind of remind me of what I've covered so far, or what I still need to cover, please let me know down in the comments below. Outside of that, you guys can support me by going to frank and checking out all of my businesses, including organ supplements. Please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said, frank You can support me further through all of my businesses. Thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.